If you really like the power of Photoshop, but you don't think it's a very intuitive program and it's very complicated for you, you might want to take a look at Pixelmator, available for Macs only in the Apple App Store. I'm Alex Bavalsik from HowToDoTech.com, and today we're looking at a Photoshop supplement known as Pixelmator. So Pixelmator is definitely about as powerful as Photoshop. It is a very powerful photo editor, but it's much easier to use. Now this isn't something like GIMP or something online, which has some of the more advanced features of Photoshop, but really doesn't look polished and is kind of more of just an addition. This is a full replacement, if not a supplement, to Photoshop and it's actually a very powerful editing tool. Now, as I said before, this is only available for Mac in the App Store, but it is only $30, so it's a fraction of the price of Photoshop, and I certainly use it a lot. I absolutely love it, and I could not recommend it more. So let's actually take a look at Pixelmator itself. I'm gonna go over to my Launchpad and launch Pixelmator. Now from here, you're automatically brought up with your iCloud selections. These are the basic templates that I use for my personal channel videos, and I have them all saved under here. I also can save them to my Mac, and I could go through different areas on my Mac if I wanted to find them through this area. So I'm just going to make a new one for my desktop, and I'll hit New Document after I select the place where I want to uh, save it. So I'll hit New Document. And now I can choose the custom size of this. I could always go with a preset or do a custom. I'm going to stick with the 1920 by 1080 at 72 pixels per inch. Hit OK to that. Now Pixelmator does have the ability to run full screen. I'm not as big of a fan of this, but um, it certainly can be helpful if you want to hide some things. So for Pixelmator, you're going to have a lot of different easy to use menu interfaces. So if we go up to view, you can see all the different things you can show. You can show grid and rulers and such. Um, see, we can also have rulers along the top. I'm actually going to hide the grid for now, but I guess we could leave the rulers. I'm just gonna minimize this so it's easier to get to the uh, view menu. But we also have a, a styles menu. This is great for shapes most of the time, but it does do some other cool things. We also have brushes. Brushes can also be um, found from the main tools menu by just hitting the brush. We can go and do gradients. Now this menu will pop up a lot, but of course you can get this by hitting the gradients button on the tools. Um, this is actually very helpful because you can make your custom gradients really simply and you have different types, which we'll get into in just a sec. And we also have shapes. This is very easy to get to. You can just hit the shapes on the tools as well. So I'm going to hide those menus. Of course, you also have the layers menu and the tools menu. You're probably never going to want to hide those, but they are up there as well. And we're going to hide the rulers. Now, there's not much that I can show you in the duration of a short um, review slash tutorial thing, but I will showcase just a couple features to show how powerful this is. First, I want to talk about gradients. This is actually very simple. Uh, much simpler than what a lot of people know with gradients, and that's why I want to show it off. So we do have a wide variety of pre-made gradients. You can also make a custom one like I have here and add it. But say I want to use this custom one that I've made with a green, white, and blue. This right here will choose how fast the blending happens. So if I put this really close together, the uh, blue will suddenly turn to white. And if I put it close to the blue, the white will suddenly turn to blue. Somewhere in the middle gives that nice gradient blend. So I want to see how far this is. That's at 50 so we're going to put this a little bit closer to 50. Okay, now that I have that in there, I'm going to just add this. Now there's different types. You have linear, radial, and angle. Linear is really simple. You start at one point. I'm going to start at the top left corner, and then you go to another point, and it puts that gradient across those two points. Very simple. We'll undo that gradient. There's radial, which means you're probably going to want to start somewhere close to the center or along the side. And when you put it out, it kind of makes a circle effect, depending on how big you want this radius to be. That's why it normally looks pretty cool in the center. But I guess if you had maybe one on the right, one on the left, um, you can make a really cool gradient that way. You can also do angular. Now this one looks pretty cool if you have a lot of colors, but when you have something like three colors, it shows um, when the blue and green connect together. This might look cool if you're going from a corner like so. Um, you have white and then that can merge into green or merge into blue, but normally when those two edges of the gradient meet together like this, it looks a little weird. 
So those are your three different gradient types. Making them is quite simple. You can have a color. If you want, you can add a color just by tapping somewhere and then choosing color. Maybe I want this in there somehow. And suddenly we have a new type of gradient. So very simple and you can make those to your heart's content. Now those uh, gradients are very fun to use. You also have a couple more powerful tools like uh, you have cropping in this and you have different selection tools. There's this thing called the magic selector. Now for this, I wanna bring in just a separate image. So I'm gonna go and bring in this old um, thumbnail that I used for a personal video. And the magic selection tool is actually going to select an area. Now it's not just gonna select the color most of the time. It's actually gonna try to trace um, the object and find, say I want just the inside of this D. Now for this, I'm going to turn off the background layer so you can see how I move this. But when I tap inside the D, it notices this white area goes up until the blue, and this is the border of the blue. So now that I've selected that area, I can drag the inside of the D wherever I want. And you could do this multiple times. Now the only part where this gets a little um, confusing or just isn't very helpful is when you have something like this iPad. That white border of the iPad is quite thin, barely even a pixel wide. So the magic selection tool might not even notice that and would select the entire background. Now you could probably guess that it is selecting the entire background when it takes this long to select. I hit the iPad a while ago and it's still searching for an edge and it's kind of getting the entire white background itself. So we're not going to worry as much about that. It's a tool that can be very helpful for quick edits and um, I definitely recommend using it. It certainly does make your life easier. And now I'm just going to get rid of that layer real quick. We also have masks and there are tons and tons of tutorials, more that we could show you ourselves, which is why you're going to want to take a look at Pixelmator's website that I have open right now in Chrome. Now Pixelmator, they're on 3.1 marble right now. And just to showcase the power, this takes full advantage of the Mac Pro's editing ability is showcased right here. So that certainly shows that it's very powerful, um, almost as powerful as Photoshop. It does have a little less features, but it is a very, very nice application. And if you just go under here, under tutorials, they showcase not all, but a very large portion of what they already have, whether it's new and noteworthy or um, this. And they even put it, they break it up into different areas um, from imaging basics to drawing and tons of different things. So there are a lot of tutorials here, more than how to do tech could really put time into doing. So I highly suggest going to pixelmator.com if you do purchase this application and use it to the fullest. Personally, I do find this to be much more intuitive than um, Photoshop and I find it to look a lot better. So that's really Pixelmator. I personally really like this application. I cannot live without it. It is what I use to do all of my image editing and it's certainly gotten me very far. We'd love to know what you think of Pixelmator so you can leave that down in the comments below after watching this video and thanks for watching. So we hope you have enjoyed this video from How To Do Tech. If you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments below or email us at howtodotechyt at gmail.com. We do ask that if you have a question, you leave the device you're using as well as the operating system along with your question. How to Do Tech is on Google Plus and Facebook, so feel free to circle us and like us there. You can also ask us questions on those social media profiles. Click on the annotations now to go to any one of our videos or playlists. You can also click the links in the description to go to all of our playlists. Don't forget to like and subscribe.